Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we're still trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. You've heard of the old saying, getting ahead of your skis. You're jumping off a lift, and then I don't do it. I'd never do that. You lean too far forward, well, guess what happens? You tumble. You heard a lot of that during discussions about the bond market, and the bond market kind of got a little bit ahead of their skis. When the central bank made a few statements in December, this is what happened. You can see right here that there was this wave of optimism that rates were going to come down. So the bond market reacted, mortgage rates dropped, and now they're going up. Well, the dirty little secret is nothing really changed with the central bank, the Federal Reserve. So the bond market thought, well, here come the rate cuts. Here we go. The CPI looks good. Let's get going. They weren't the only ones that followed this wave of optimism. It just seemed like every agent on social media said, here we go. Rate cuts are coming. I told you it's going to be a strong spring. And the public reacted. The public reacted positively, put their listings out there and priced them according to how they feel. Now, a little spoiler alert here. I'm showing you what the asking price is. But I'm also going to show you the prices are not in decline. So this is not a video that says, here comes the crash. Here we go. I'm showing you what's going on today. And what we're seeing here is that there's this wave of optimism in asking prices. And it's predicated on all of the other information that we saw prior, that in December there was this wave of, of euphoria of rates are coming down here. That people were talking about 5 and 5.5%. And here comes a strong spring. So get ready to go because March, April, and May are going to be really brisk. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say, no, it's not. It's not going to be really brisk. And I'm going to show you why here. So this is where we're at with our contract ratio. Now, it's kind of a bit of an eye chart, but not really. Let me see if I can blow this up just a hair for you. And you can see where we're at over here. We have a contract ratio of 47.7. Let's go back to last year, 2023, and go to, let's see, there's July, September, October, November, December. I'm going the wrong way here. Here we are, January 2023, our contract ratio was 50.1. So the con number of homes going under contract are slightly less than last year. And I track this on a seven-day moving average, and the first thing that sticks out is new listings have taken this big dive right here. Well, look to the left here. Took the same dive last year. So listings under contract past week have come down. They also did last year. So there's nothing really to glean from that except to say, while there was this wave of optimism that rates were going to come down and sales were going to take off and January and February were the beginning of a brisk market, we're seeing things that are telling us, well, not yet. If we look at my favorite one, which is the Cromford Market Index and Supply supply index and i've said for a long time if you see these lines cross then that's an indication that things are changing but we at the time were anticipating that the listings the blue line we're going to start going above the red line which is demand well the opposite has occurred listings have not exploded we're sitting with a listing count now still in the fifteen thousand range and that's still below last year at this time and we're seeing that Bidding wars are not showing up. So the wave of optimism as far as how much you can ask for your house, um, you can go ahead and be optimistic because homes are selling. But try not to get wildly carried away because it's not that great. In fact, I like where the market is right now. I like that we've got a decent amount of listings for the amount of volume that we have, that it's not creating chaos. There's time to look at a home. There's time to make a rational decision. Sellers were a little bit spoiled because we're used to selling it over the weekend. That's in the rearview mirror now. I don't see that popping up anytime soon. So I think it's a good, good market for all of us at the moment. Is it a bit unaffordable? Yeah, it's way unaffordable for many people. Uh, but imagine if rates came down and came down in the fives where we'd be looking at today and how brisk the market would be. It would be pretty wild. I've seen some comments that have said that, well, the uh, administration is going to do all they can to lower inflation, and they're going to make sure that the economy is doing well because there's an election coming up. Well, 
Let's dissect that for just a moment. A little bit of opinion here. If the central bank were to lower rates, wouldn't they just be reigniting inflation? And tell me how good that would be for the current administration. So does anybody really have any incentive to reignite the market? No. You don't want inflation to come up. We've seen that in the rearview mirror. We saw that in the 80s. It didn't end well. So I don't believe any of that political speak that's out there. I may be on an island by myself, but I'm seeing what the central bank's trying to do in and of themselves as an independent entity. I'm just watching it closely. Are we going to get a soft landing? Nobody knows. The bond market's already shown you that they don't know. And here's our contract closings per month here. Um, it's closing per month above list price. Only 13% of the homes listed are getting above their list price versus the silly season where it was 60%. And you can see here that the average over list is only $5,000. So there isn't a tremendous amount of overbidding on homes in our Phoenix market right now. Pending listings. Pending listings while they're up and they're up every stink in January and February are still below last year. So it's not knocking it out of the park, so to speak. Monthly median sales price. You can see right here where it's kind of gone flat. That's the median sales price. What's going on with the average sales price? Well, it kind of took off a little bit here in October, and it's kind of flat right now. Again, not knocking it out of the park. So I would describe today's market in the Phoenix market area as moderately healthy. It's not sick. It's not anemic. It's not brisk. It's just kind of there. Interest rates are knocking on 7%. That's going to see some declines in sales. That's going to be a slow February when compared to past years, uh, but they're not falling off a cliff. Not enough pressure now to put downward pricing pressure. If I look at my sales to list ratio, new listings, we're still about 79, 80%. That doesn't put downward pricing pressure on your home. But having said that, don't get overly optimistic with asking price. There's no upward pressure that says that you can get more than what your neighbor got this year. So be careful when you're pricing your home. And if you price it correctly, it will sell. So there's a lot of stuff to watch. Now, there is another Fed meeting coming up. They're going to talk about lowering rates, but here's the kicker on that. They've already said they're probably not going to lower rates in March. But even if they did meet in March and say we're going down a quarter of a percent, I think the bond market has kind of already baked that in. And it would go, rates would probably, mortgage rates probably go from 7% to 6.8. It wouldn't be a monumental move. Now the conversation is, well, we may not see anything till May. Well, there once your spring market, folks, unless something radically changes. I think the inflation data may show us a few surprises as we look ahead. I don't know. I just see some of the numbers. I see the level of spending that's out there. I see some supply side constraints coming along. I only put these out there not as a prediction, but saying there's some stuff out there that can muddy the water a little bit. Just like the employment data. Nobody expected that many jobs, and now we got them. They go, oh, no. Well, why are we happy there's too many jobs? Well, we were kind of hoping rates would go down. So it's not just a centralized world that just concentrates on real estate. There's a lot of economic moving parts out there that we need to continue to watch. If you have any questions, give me a call. I'd be happy to talk to you. I may not. If I don't pick up right away, I promise to call you back. Thanks. Have a great day.